Let's talk about the concept of moment of inertia. This is a concept that is going to be very important for the design of the structures in other courses. Now, the concept of moment of inertia is not the same concept as inertia. Sometimes those two get confused just because of the name, but they are very different. Inertia is when you have a body that is in motion, and moment of inertia is related to the property of an area of the property of a cross-section. So let's say that we have a beam like the ones that we have seen before. This is a simply supported beam. And let's say that we have some type of force somewhere applied to that structure. Uh, the traditional pictures that we've drawn are the ones shown in there, which is like a side view of the beam. Now, when we talk about moment of inertia, we're interested in the cross section of that beam. That is, if I make a cut and I look at the cut from, this, from the side of this side view, we're gonna see something, perhaps something like this. Let's say if this is a two by four, you're gonna see something like this, right? That's going to be my cross section. So uh, we're gonna be talking about the cross section of beams and um, in this particular topic of moment of inertia. All right, this is going to be important because when you look at the design of a structure uh, in this particular uh, long elements like beams or columns, uh, we say that this, the uh, resistant to moments, of, to external moments, are going to be a function of several things. It's going to be uh, a function of the type of material, it's going to be a function of the length of that element, it's going to be a function also uh, of the load, of course, and also uh, of the shape of the cross section. So that the shape of this cross of this cross section is going to be very, very important. <clears throat> All right. So just want to make clear clear that we're going to be talking about the cross section, not about the side view of the beam. All right. So uh, when we look at cross sections of beams, what we're going to see is that you can have different types of cross sections, right? Let's say, for example, that we have a cross section that looks something like this. I'm gonna draw an axis, X. I'm gonna have two different types of cross sections. I'm gonna have one that is like this. I'm gonna have another one that is like this. And my assumption is that both of them have the same area, right? For now, I'm gonna say, let's make the assumption that both of them have the same area. <clears throat> so I'm gonna call this number one, I'm gonna call this number two, just to differentiate between them. Now, my question is going to be, which of these two cross sections will be more resistant to bending, assuming that the bending is similar to what we have on the left-hand side of the diagram? So. That's going to be similar to having something like this. It's a, a big ruler, right? And you can see this as being the beam. And I'll either put it like this, which is easy for me to bend, right? Not too bad. Easy to, for me to bend. But if I put it like this, it's going to be very difficult, right? Very difficult to bend. Now let's look at the cross section. So see if this fits in here. The cross section of the beam can be either like this. That's number two in the diagram, or like this, and that's number one in the diagram. And depending on the orientation, right, if I make the, if I orient it like this, it's gonna be difficult for me to bend. If I do it like this, much easier, much easier for me to bend, right? Depending on the orientation, right, the resistance of that cross section is going to be different. And it's the same section, it's the same element, right? The area is going to be the same, the same material, but how, how much bending it can resist will be different. So in this particular case, number one, what happens is most of the area is away from the axis, from that x-axis, right? And that's the axis in which it's going to try to bend. So in this case, area, from the axis and that's going to create you know that bigger resistance right and in this case the area is close to the axis 
the area of that cross section. <clears throat> so what we what we what we're learning is that the more uh, distributed away from that axis of bending you have the area, the more resistance you're going to have to bending, right? So that's that's one of the lessons. So to be able to to quantify that, we have this term that is called moment of inertia or the second moment of area. So <clears throat> let's do a definition of moment of inertia. You can also call it <clears throat> the second moment of area. It's the same thing. You find it uh, in different with different names, right? And basically what this is, it is a property of an area, right? So it's the same way that a, sh a shape uh, might have an area or a perimeter. There is another property which is called the moment of inertia or the second moment of area. So that's, that's all it is, right? It is a property of an area. And in this particular case, in statics, we're going to use the cross sections of beams as, as our area of interest. Um, so, as I said, this is just like, like perimeter, area, etc. Right? So, just like anything like that. One of the interesting things about this moment of inertia is going to have a very particular type of unit. So its units are length to the four. For example, it can be inches to the four, centimeters to the four, right? So anything that is length to the four, those are the, the units, the, the, the proper units uh, for moment of inertia. Again, my pen is just not happy with me these days, but that, that size units there on the left. <clears throat> so and the other thing that we learn is the higher the moment of inertia, the more resistance To bending. That's that's one of the, the key that I want you to remember to remember. Yeah, my pen again, not happy. So it's the higher the moment of inertia, the more resistance to bending. That's a comma right here. Okay, cool. <clears throat> that's it. So that's that's the thing that I want you to remember in terms of the concept. What is the moment of inertia? It's just a property of an area, just like we learn about perimeters or areas in the past, this is just another property. Now, how do we calculate it? So by definition, this is, somebody define it this way, and in other classes, you're going to say that it's actually quite convenient to define moment of inertia this way, all right? By definition, let's say that we have a um, um, some axis, x and y axis, And we have some type of shape, right? That's, let's say, the cross-section of the beam. <clears throat> By definition, we're going to have the ix is going to be the integral of y squared dA, right? Where my dA is this. And my y is going to be the distance from my x-axis to the location of that dA. So this is going to be my y, right? That distance. In a similar way, we have that my moment of inertia about the y-axis, so i is usually used for moment of inertia, and the subscript determines the axis that you're using for the calculations, either the x-axis or the y-axis. It's going to be the integral of x squared dA. dA, again, is that differential of area, and my x is going to be the distance from my x-axis, sorry, my y-axis, to my dA, right? So that's, by the, that's the definition of moment of inertia. One of the things that is uh, uh, um, 
important to learn in this concept of moment of inertia is what is called the parallel axis theorem. And I'm not going to go into the um, uh, proof that this parallel axis theorem actually works. I'm just going to uh, explain it. Uh, but, and then if you want to look at a, a, at a, at a proof, you can uh, Google it. It's, there are many places online that you can see that. But in the parallel axis theorem, This is going to be very important because look at what's happening on the top. If I change the axis, my moment of inertia is going to change. So I need to find a way to easily calculate moments of inertia of the same cross section with axes that are parallel to each other. Let me explain. So if I have, let's say, some type of shape, I'll draw this one a little bit bigger. That can be anything. It can be a triangle, a rectangle, right? I'm just making a general shape. And let's say that we have the centroid of that shape right there, right? And we know how to calculate that centroid. Okay. So if I take an axis that is going through the centroid, let me call that axis X. And I know the moment of inertia about the axis that goes through that centroid. And now I have a second axis. The second axis, I'm going to call it X prime. And the distance between those two axes is D. So D is the distance between those two axes. Then I can easily calculate the moment of inertia about the axis X prime. The Question for that is the moment of inertia about x prime is equal to the moment of inertia about the centroid plus the area of that cross section times the distance between the two parallel axes square. So let's revise each of these terms again. This one is the moment of inertia about my x prime, right? This ix is my moment of inertia about x, and this is goes through the centroid, right? It's important that this goes through the centroid. The a is the area of my, of my section I'm going to put cross section, but it's in reality it's for any area, right? And D is the distance between the parallel axes. Now, it's important to know which one is the moment of inertia about the centroid and which one is on the parallel axis because if we want to solve for ix, what we're going to see is the following. I'm just going to use that equation over there. I'm going to put the a and the d squared in the other side of the equal sign. And we're going to see that my ix can also be calculated as ix prime minus a d squared. All I did is to solve for ix. So sometimes it becomes confusing whether or not to use plus or minus. And what I used to remember uh, this is if I'm going away from the centroid in my in my parallel axis, right? So if my x prime is away from the centroid, I use plus. If I'm going towards the centroid, I need to use minus, right? And that makes sense because the farther away you go from the centroid, you will expect more of the area to be away from that axis, so your moment of inertia should be bigger. So to summarize, what we have here is we've learned the concept of moment of inertia. And this is usually applied in statics as we talk to cross sections of beams. And it's going to be something important to design uh, structural elements in, in other classes. The more the area is away from, this, from, this, from the axis of interest, the moment of inertia is going to be larger, right? By definition, uh, it, is the, it is calculated using those integrals. 
And there is also a very useful um, uh, theorem that is called the parallel axis theorem that allows me to calculate the, um, the uh, uh, moment of inertia of a, uh, in an axis that is parallel to another one that I might know, right? So you can go either away from the centroid or towards the centroid, and you need to be careful with that plus or minus signs. My recommendation at this point is use the top equation, always get the one from the centroid, and just go away from the centroid, and you always use plus until you get used to this.